Here we have a cannon launching a cannonball horizontally to the ground. We launch it at a height of h and it lands at a distance of d. So the question is, if we were to double the height of the cannon, will the cannonball land at double the distance? So to answer this question, we need to understand how projectiles work. Now horizontally, the motion is moving at a constant velocity. So we can describe this motion with delta x is v equal to vx, the horizontal velocity, times t, the time. Now vertically, there is an acceleration of 9.8 meters per second squared down, and we would use one of the four kinematic equations to describe the vertical motion of a projectile. For this problem, we're going to use delta y is equal to vit plus 1 over 2 a t squared. We're going to start with the vertical motion, and we're going to come up with the relationship between the height and the time that it's falling. For delta y, which is the vertical displacement, we're going to use h to represent that. And the initial velocity is zero because it's only moving horizontally initially. So vi is going to be zero. So this whole thing is zero. And then we have one over two. And a is the acceleration due to gravity, which we can call it g, times t squared, time that it's going to be falling through the air. And we're going to solve for t. t squared is equal to 2h divided by g, and if we square root both sides, we get that t is equal to square root 2h divided by g. Now, we want to find the time it takes for it to hit the ground if we were to double the height of the cannon. So we're going to call this time t prime. So this is our new time, how long it would take for the ball to hit the ground if we doubled the height of the cannon. And we're going to substitute 2h for this h here. So we have 2, and then instead of h, we're going to do use 2h divided by g. Now I'm going to factor out square root of h. So we, sorry, square root of 2. We're going to factor out square root of 2. And then we get square root 2 times h divided by g. Now have we seen the square root 2h divided by g? We have. We saw it right there. So we're going to substitute this t for this two square root 2h over g, and we get that the new time is equal to square root of 2 times t. So the by increasing the height of the cannon, it's going to take a factor of square root of 2 times t. Square root of 2 is about 1.4, so it'll be about 1.4 times the original time. Now we're going to look at this horizontally because we're trying to relate this to distance. And we know horizontally is moving at constant velocity, so we'll use this equation delta x is equal to vx plus t. And we know that t is going to be changed by a, a factor of square root of 2. Now I'm going to use d to represent the horizontal displacement. This is also known as the range. So we have d is equal to vx times e. And when we increase the height of the cannon, we're going to call this distance b prime. And then I'm going to substitute, instead of t, we're going to substitute that with square root of 2 times t. Okay. Now if I factor out square root of 2, I get square root of 2 times vx t. Now have we seen this vx t before? We have right here. So we can substitute the original distance back in here, and we find that the new distance when we increase the height by 2 is equal to square root of 2 times the original distance. So the new distance when you double the height of the cannon is not double the distance, but it changes by a factor of square root of 2, or roughly about 1.4 times d. All right, but that didn't double the distance. So how much height do you think we have to increase it by to double the distance? Let's go ahead and try quadrupling four times the height. Let's see if that will do it. All right, so we're going to go back to our vertical motion equation here. So delta y equals vit plus 1 over 2at squared. Once again, we know that is 0. Delta y, we're going to call this h. This is equal to 1 over 2at squared. So if we quadruple the height, how would that affect the time? So t squared is equal to 2h over an a, we can call that g. So once again, we get the time to fall through the air 
is going to be square root of 2h over g. Now, we're going to increase the height by four times, so let's see what our new falling time is going to be. It's going to be square root 2, and then this is going to be 4h. Notice how this is different than before, divided by g. I will factor out that square root of 4 in there, and then we end up with 2, right, because square root of 4 is 2, times square root of 2h over g. Have we seen 2 square root of 2h over g before? Yeah, we saw it right there. So the time for it to fall at 4 times the height is going to be 2 times the original time. Now we're going to move on to the horizontal motion here. We know that delta x equals vx times t. And delta x, we're going to call that v for distance, is equal to the horizontal velocity times the time. And then we're going to substitute 2t in here. So the new distance, what is the new distance if we increase the height by 4 times? is going to be vx times 2t. And if I factor out the 2, I get 2 times vx times t. Have we seen vx times t before? We have right there, right? So we're going to go ahead and substitute that d back in there. And we see that the new distance, if we increase the height by 4, is 2 times the original distance, so double the original distance. Now I'm going to show you an experiment where I verify this result. Check out this experiment. This is a projectile motion ramp. I've got a steel ball here. I'm going to roll it down. We're going to see where it lands. I've got carbon paper to mark where it lands on the ground. And then we're going to compare it to this ramp, which is four times as high. We're going to roll it down the ramp again. And then here's carbon paper. We're going to mark and find out where it lands. And we're going to compare the two distances. So here's the ball. Here's the first one. I'm going to go and roll it down. Okay. So now I'm going to pick up the ball. We're going to roll it down the taller ramp. Here we go. Three, two, one, go. Okay. Now let's go ahead and compare the distances here. So I'm going to remove the first carbon paper. You can see that's where it landed. And here's the second carbon paper. And you can see that's where it landed. So we're going to measure the distance. So here's the first one. You can see that's about 25 centimeters right there, roughly 25, 26. And then the second one, you can see that it is roughly about 52. So 26 times 2 is 56, so it's twice the distance. If you found this video helpful, check out my next video on how to solve projectile motion problems.